Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo, and today we have an OU narrated Wi-Fi battle for you from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Now I know it's been a little while since I posted a battle video, that holiday week really kicked my butt, I had to work several extra shifts, and also um, on the holiday, so I just kind of was out of it, I, I so many doubles in a row wears you out. But anyways, though, I'm really happy to bring you this battle, if you have not checked out Wave Bomber's new YouTube channel, please go do so. Um, whether you pause the video right now and go subscribe to him, or wait until the end, please go check him out. He is one of the best OU battlers I've faced, and uh, even though I like to use um, more unconventional Pokemon like you see here, I, this is an OU battle, but here I am with Zoroark, Electivire, uh, Mega Pidgeot, and Gastrodon, he constantly pushes me to kind of get better in OU. Uh, his team, of course, is fairly standard. I was looking at his team construction, and I figured if he let out with Greninja, um, it might actually be Scarfed, uh, but he decided to lead out with his Landorus, which made me think that it was a defensive Landorus. So thinking that he'd set up Stealth Rocks, I ended up leading out with my Zoroark. I just went for Hidden Power Ice, but he goes for U-Turn, which tells me that is definitely Scarfed. And so I lose my Zoroark on the first turn of the battle. He doesn't get a chance to do a darn thing this battle, but that's neither here nor there. I will actually also be posting uh, Round 2, the rematch we have from this battle. Uh, I'll be posting that in the next battle, but both of these battles were fantastic, so he goes on into Caldeo, and I have an easy switch here to Talonflame, because I can threaten it with my Brave Bird, and I know that he's going to switch, there is no point for him to stay in right there, so we're just going to go for the U-turn as Heatran comes in. Uh, I guess he could have stayed in there predicting the U-turn, but he didn't really have a reason to risk that, that didn't make a lot of sense for him to risk that. Now, since I went for U-turn right there, when I in, in that situation later on, I am going to switch up my plays. I actually go on into Electivire here, hoping to catch the Heatran with an Earthquake. I know that he can switch back out into his Landorus to take any move, but I also can threaten Landorus with my Ice Punch. So I wanted to see kind of how he dealt with that. He decides to go out into Caldeo, and I actually expected Landorus to come in, so I did go for Ice Punch, which sucks, because I'm not able to hit the Landorus with it. I get a critical hit, but that doesn't matter too much. And he actually goes for Secret Sword, which since I am minus defense on this uh, Electivire, I'm, able to, I'm actually able to take it. And since he uh, doesn't have uh, Assault Vest or anything like that, my Volt Switch does a fantastic amount of damage and I'm able to go back out in a Talonflame. I would have really preferred to KO it right there, but eh, I'm able to finish it off with Talonflame just as easily. I, I didn't bother going for a U-turn here because I didn't think he would switch out with this Caldeo at that low of HP. So I'm able to finish that off with relative ease, which is good. Caldeo is quite annoying in the real game in the same way it's annoying in the card game. Now as he goes back on the Heatran, we're just going to U-turn again. Here I was expecting him to set up rocks or go for a burn or something like that. And so I was trying to figure out what the best switch into Heatran would be. And it's still my Electivire. I know I only have 17 HP. But if he decides to attack, then I can use uh, Electivire as a sacrifice. And if he decides to set up rocks, then hopefully I can outspeed him and hit him with an Earthquake, or at least force his Landorus to come in. He actually ends up going for Toxic, which is not that bad, honestly. Uh, with Toxic on Electivire, I actually am going to be able to live another switch in. And since I reset the poison counter there, I'll be able to live another Toxic damage too. So here we actually make a double switch at the same time as he goes out to his Latias, I go out to my Gastrodon. And here I needed to see what type of uh, Latias this was. He goes for Psyshock and he gets the information that I am a physically defensive Gastrodon. This is the Gastrodon that I actually got from Renato uh, that I that he put counter on and I've wanted to run counter Gastrodon for so very, very long. Uh, and I really like Gastrodon, especially after seeing the way that Paul used it in the anime. It's very cool there. Now I am able to Toxic Latias which is good, I can maybe force him into going for Healing Wish sooner rather than later, or uh, at the very least just whittle it down. I already know that the Latias that he runs does not use Recover like the ones that I run. So Toxic is a good thing here. And I knew he would probably go for Draco Meteor now that he's whittled me down some, so I just went for Recover thinking that I could live it. And it does do more damage than I expected it to, but I am able to live it. I don't have any special defensive investment on this particular Gastrodon, or if I do, it's just four, four EV points or one point of stats in, uh, investment. So I am able to live it, which forces him out, and that means it's time to go for Scald, 
maybe I can hit something and burn something. But he brings back in Heatran, so while I am unable to burn it, I do a decent chunk for being completely non-invested in special attack. Uh, Heatran is going to be important to whittle down because right now the Pidgeot that I actually use in this team cannot touch Heatran at all. I finally got another Pidgeot with Hidden Power Ground. I think uh, I got that from Tanner off of Twitter, so shout outs to him. But uh, he actually sets up his Stealth Rocks, and I just keep on going for Scald because this Heatran right now can wall my Meg Mega Pidgeot. I needed to put it in a range where Mega Pidgeot could at least have a chance of taking it out with a Hurricane. Uh, even with Leftovers here, I need one more Scald to have it at that range. And I actually don't think I have any Entry Hazard Setters on my team. I need to breed a new Excadrill that can set up Entry Hazards and spin them away because that would be pretty useful. This one is actually an Assault Vest variant with Iron Head for Fairies, Earthquake, Rapid Spin, and Rock Slide. Here I just switched out expecting another Toxic. And now, of course, he can go for a Fire-type move. But I did figure I'd be able to live any Fire-type move from him uh, because of my Assault Vest. If you hear Bird Stripping in the background, uh, you don't actually hear that. You just actually hit your head and the little birds are flying around. So you might want to take a minute there. But anyways, though, he does end up going for Lava Plume as I go for Rapid Spin just to get rid of the rocks. I really thought he would switch. I could have very easily Earthquake there and killed his Heatran. Uh, but he definitely called my bluff right there. Now thinking that he set up the rocks one more time, I decided to go back out into Electivire. And he does set up rocks, which is good. Because uh, now hopefully I can live the Toxic if my fortune is good and my math is correct. Because I think last time I had 17 HP. That's what I was thinking at least. But unfortunately I, I must have done my math wrong because I didn't live the Toxic. So darn. I would have brought in my Electivire differently if I had done my math a little bit differently. So we basically got up his Stealth Rock for free there. And now I have to spin them away again, which is annoying. And so now Heatran and Excadrill are going to enter um, a little bit of a competition here for seal types, because I need to keep mine and he needs to keep his. But uh, I can kill his Heatran with my Excadrill. So here, Jeffs want to go for Earthquake here, trying to hit the Heatran since last time I rapid spun. And he predicted that switch up in my moves there. I try to play a little bit unpredictably as I switch up my moves. But he made some great predictions in that battle, in that setup of moves there. As he goes for U-turn, I am just going to go for Rapid Spin again. I could have gone for Earthquake because I didn't expect him to go for Earthquake on his own side of the field there. Just because I can bring in my Mega, my Pidgeot very easily on that. And uh, he actually goes for a Draco Meteor. And here's where he finds out um, just how annoying a Salt Ex Excadrill is. Because even under half HP with no special defense investment, I'm able to live that. And that means I'm going to be able to hit his... Uh, Latias with an Earthquake because of Mold Breaker uh, getting rid of the Levitate ability. And after the Poison damage, although I don't have that much uh, physical attack investment, I'm much more defensive with a little bit of speed and a bunch of HP. Really a weird set, but it works out right here as I'm able to take out Latias and he's not able to Healing Wish off to any of his Pokemon. Uh, now he does bring back out his Landorus. Here I am expecting the Earthquake, so I decided to go out in the Pidgeot just to dodge it. He actually just goes for U-turn again because that probably would have KO'd my Excadrill at the HP that level that it was at. But at least now since um, he trans at a relatively low level of HP, uh, I know uh, maybe I can probably take it out with a couple of Hurricanes. Uh, but I don't want to try Mega Evolving in front of Greninja because he will just Ice Beam me in the face or he could also use Rock Slide. Hoping for the, the random Rock Slide or something like that, I go on an Excadrill. But he does have Ice Beam because that's pretty standard on most Greninja. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what you all think about Greninja being suspect for uh, banning from OU. I've never really had a problem facing Greninja. Yes, it's it's probably in the top three of used Pokemon right now. I've never had any issues with it, uh, even when if, even with it running Gunk Shot for Fairies. But that's just me. Do you think it's over centralizing to the meta game? Just let me know. But anyways though, I bring back out Talonflame just to threaten the Greninja. I knew he would probably switch out into Landorus, but at this point I really want to put some damage onto Landorus, so that way when I have to hit it with Mega Pidgeot, with Hurricane, I can certainly take it out with a Hurricane. So that minus one uh, Sharp Beak boosted Brave Bird does a fantastic amount of damage. I kind of wish I had gone for Brave Bird earlier, just so that I would be able to, to finish it off already. But he actually locks himself into knockoff, which I'm okay with. I decided to go out into Gastrodon, and I just decided to recover up because I need Gastrodon at high HP in order to deal with not only Landorus, but also his Mega Metagross. 
uh, now that I lost my leftovers, I have to go for recover more often, so that was a little bit annoying that I lost those leftovers, but as long as I keep my HP up, I can definitely deal with those physical threats. Uh, he brings back out Heatran just to set the rocks back up, which is unfortunate as I tried to keep them off the field as much as I could for Pidgeot, and Pidgeot came in and was immediately scared out, basically. But, eh, what can you do? I didn't take the Stealth Rock damage when I did bring it in, so that's good at least. Now here, he actually goes for Toxic on my Gastrodon. I didn't want to switch out because I saw an opportunity to KO his Heatran, which I really, really, really wanted because of Mega Pidgeot. If I had switched out, I guess I could have dodged the Toxic there, or at least had it inflicted onto someone who wouldn't mind it as much, like Pidgeot. But it's annoying to have it on Gastrodon because I don't have leftovers. Now he's using this as an opportunity to go out into his Mega Metagross here, or his Metagross who will then be a Mega Metagross, and I knew I could live any one hit from this thing. I didn't calc it, I didn't know from previous experience, I just felt like I could live any one hit with max HP and max defense, even with the HP that I was missing. And I lived that hit fantastically, I don't get flinched and I'm able to counter it and knock out Mega Metagross in one hit. I was so proud of Gastrodon for living that hit so well like that, and not flinching. If he had flinched me, the battle would have been over right there, basically, because he would have had a full health uh, Mega Metagross. Uh, he goes out into his Landorus. He just goes for U-Turn. I really wanted to go for um, Counter right there, just so I can put some decent damage on whatever he U-Turns out into. But he actually goes out into his uh, Greninja, so Counter may have been the better move there, because it would have done more damage than Scald. But Scald, of course, has the chance to burn, uh, and I don't get the burn, unfortunately, and I'm going to go down to some annoying poison. But Gastrodon was definitely my MVP during this match for whittling down Heatran so much, taking out Meta Mega Metagross, and forcing his landers to switch out a lot. Now right here, I'm going to use Brave Bird just to, to wipe out Greninja. Uh, I was, the chip damage that I was able to get on it with Scald ensures that, oh, even if he had a Focus Sash, don't have to deal with it right there. Uh, granted, we know he has a life work, but still, want to get that chip damage in when you can when you don't see those enemy items. And based on the damage that I did last time with a Brave Bird, uh, I I know for a fact that this one wouldn't KO. I do end up getting a critical hit, which knocks out the Landorus, but since I had Mega Pigeon in the back, I'm not sure what he would have locked himself into. If he had a Rock-type move, he could have locked himself into that, and maybe uh, hit my Mega Pidgeot, but my Mega Pidgeot is uh, the the build that has a little bit of HP on it, so I'm not sure if he would have KO'd my Mega Pidgeot with a single Rock type move being unstabbed and all that. So that was a fantastic battle, and I I just really enjoyed being able to battle him. Um, so tune in next time for the rematch against Wave Bomber. We'll see if the same team performs just as well in the second battle. All right, have a great day, guys. Bye bye.